Hey guys, how y'all doing? Glad to be back with you again. Uh, today we're going to do another video in our Woodsman series. And to, today the target of our affection is going to be the wild persimmon. find one at all I think we can uh, it's the right time of year some of them have already dropped and, and some of them still holding on to the persimmons but uh, let's see if we can find some persimmon trees and uh, we're going to identify the bark we're going to try to identify the leaves if we can reach them and of course I'm going to show you the fruit and uh, uh, that way that you know we're going to have we're going to have another uh, uh, bullet in our belt so to speak of woodsmanship that we can utilize not only uh, for deer hunting but for squirrel and turkey uh, if you fox hunt uh, a lot of critters in the woods love the persimmon in fact uh, I'm I'm pretty fond of them myself so uh, anyway without further ado let's go and see if we can find some persimmon trees all right guys well uh, a good place to look for persimmons is using, now I've seen them all over the woods. I've seen them on the top of ridges. Uh, and I've seen them uh, down in the bottoms. But most of the time that I find them, not all the time, I don't, I've, I really don't know, you know, a lot of people say if you get down near the creek, uh, then you're going to find your persimmon trees. But now I've found persimmons uh, all over. I've found them in, a lot of times you'll find persimmon trees where the soil's been disturbed. If they're not down at the creek, I think in the woods they grow, uh, you know, undisturbed woods, they're going to grow more toward the creek. Uh, but when you get around old uh, home places, where there was civilization before, and that's long since gone, uh, you tend to find uh, persimmon trees, as well as black walnut, but to stay focused on the persimmon, uh, I've found them at the edge of farm fields. I've found them at uh, just a long way away from the creek, but uh, in places that, that looked like at one time it had been settled. And, uh, you know, it's it's been reclaimed by the woods. But today I'm down here at the creek, and we're going to walk around. We're going to try to find some persimmons in different habitats. Uh, but today I'm down here at the creek, and I've spotted one. I want to give you uh, an idea of what the bark looks like. Because persimmon tree, uh, well, there's a variety. All the bark looks the same. But the age of the tree, the, the bark gets more and more exaggerated, and it gets darker and darker with age. So when we find a small tree, uh, it's going to have the same the type of bark. It's going to look the same, but it's not going to be near as dark, and it's not going to be the, the, the cuts in the tree, the fissures in the bark uh, are going to be more pronounced the older the tree gets. So uh, let's take a look at a tree that's that's not a real old tree. Uh, it's not a real young tree. I'd say this tree is probably 20 years old and it's uh, tall and slender. Looks like it's been uh, growing down here at the creek for some time, but let's take a look at it. All right, guys, I hope you can see that. Uh, 
you see the blockiness of the bark, how it uh, sort of reminds you of like alligator skin or something. But if you look, that tree still has a bit of a silver sheen to it. If we pan down there, if you'll look how the bark is broken up. My eye, a lot of time when I'm looking at a persimmon tree, my eye sees uh, blocks or squares. Uh, and that helps me to identify a persimmon. Usually they have deep fissures in between the bark. And the bark is broke up into blocks or squares. Sort of remind you of diced up onion or something. But uh, anyway, that's a... That's a, a small persimmon tree. I mean, it's it's been there for a while, but it's it's not a massive persimmon tree. And as they get older, uh, the bark will get uh, darker, and the fissures in the bark will be more pronounced. So let's see if we can find another one. All right, guys, uh, we found another persimmon tree down here at the creek. Uh, this tree's a little bit bigger. Uh, it's still got some of the uh, the light characteristics in the bark, but you can tell that that tree, uh, the bark is just a little bit darker. Uh, still got the, the characteristic luggy shape uh, to the bark. Uh, but you can see that that tree, uh, it's just a little bit more mature. Now the reason I'm going to show you several pictures of the bark is because when you're out in the woods, uh, if you're hunting in the late season, this tree's not going to have any fruit. It's not going to have any leaves. It's not like the oak trees where you're going to have uh, more than, than, you know, at the right time of the year, this persimmon tree, you're going to be able to find the fruit on the ground. Now, that's a dead giveaway. But a lot of times when I'm out hunting, I'll be hunting in the late season. I'll be hunting rifle. Uh, I'll come across these persimmon trees and that's definitely something that you want to note on the map uh, if you can keep up with it mentally uh, well that's fine too but uh, I would definitely mark those on the map because next year uh, in the early season you want to know where these trees are because when they fall they're like deer candy in fact coons and possums and uh, just about everything loves persimmons. So I'm going to show you a couple more uh, pictures of the bark. We're going to try to find some fruit. And, uh, of course, we're going to try to show you a leaf or two uh, from the persimmon tree. All right, guys, there's another persimmon tree. Uh, you can see the same uh, characteristics. The fissures in this tree is not quite as deep. But it's same, got that same kind of uh, alligatory looking skin. That's how I'm going to describe it. Uh, let's go see if we can find another one. All right, guys. This behind me here is a very large specimen uh, of a persimmon tree. All right, guys, there it is. And uh, this is really a big tree, uh, bigger than most. Uh, it's growing sort of out here in the open, so uh, it's, it's fairly tall. A lot of the, the trees that you find will be small, uh, but it, really the size of them don't matter. If, and uh, like I said, this one is a, is a great big sucker. It goes way up there. But now let me, let me show you the fruit. Uh, if you've not seen the fruit before, you probably have, but we're going to take a look at it anyway. All right, let's take a look. Uh, that one is sort of smashed uh, but that don't make any difference to the deer uh, it's fell off the tree it's laying here on the ground and it's just waiting on something to come eat it but uh, it's an orange fruit and uh, before they're ripe uh, the outside of the fruit is very astringent uh, but once it gets ripe uh, then it won't puck your mouth up and them deer uh, well, all the wildlife go crazy over them. But uh, there's one example. Let's see if I can find you one that's more intact. All right, guys, there's a, a little better example 
like I said, it's a globular fruit, and uh, that uh, the back side of it there was a, the flower at one time. It was sort of green. I think they have green flowers on them. But uh, the deer just absolutely love them, and they're sort of, once the skin's broken on them, they're sort of squishy. Uh, as you can see, uh, they're sort of squishy, and they got large seeds inside of them, if you can see those seeds. But... Uh, but the deer just love them. So uh, that's uh, definitely a tree that you need to be able to recognize. All right, guys. Well, I have, uh, I wasn't able to find a leaf on that mature tree that we looked at a few minutes ago. Uh, but I wandered out to the edge of this field uh, on this fence line and I found a small persimmon tree. Uh, and it's still got some leaves on it. And uh, so I'm going to give you a look at this small tree. Uh, we'll take a look at the bark and we're going to take a look at the leaf. Now, keep in mind that the leaves uh, are, well, they're starting to get their fall color. Uh, in the summertime, they're going to be a, a shiny, glossy, dark green. But as fall comes, they'll start. Uh, getting a red tint uh, and it seems to me that some trees hold their leaves a little longer than others uh, but it may be another uh, feature that can help you identify the persimmon so let's take a look now in my mind uh, that sort of reminds me of a uh, any other fruit tree like a pear or an apple uh, they sort of have that same general shape and if you look real close, let's see if I can zoom in on it. Uh, we got one hanging right there. All right. But now if you'll look at this tree, it's a young tree. And you sort of got the, the same luggy bark. And uh, same sort of characteristics, but you can see on the juvenile tree, the bark is not near as dark. So, that's a young tree. That tree's probably not any bigger around my arm, so. but it's producing persimmons. And that's what matters to the deer. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. It's the American wild persimmon. Now keep in mind when you find those trees in the woods, the trees are male and female. Uh, and the female tree is the only one that actually produces fruit. Of course, they're both needed, but finding a single tree sometimes can lead you to disappointment. But rest assured, if you find a persimmon, it comes from somewhere. You find a male tree and, and it don't have any persimmons on it. And you check it the next year and it don't have any persimmons on it. Now rest assured that within uh, the range of whatever animal consumed that persimmon, there's more persimmon trees and they do have fruit. So uh, just keep that in mind. They don't all produce. Now a lot of times when I find one, I get looking around because they seem to, well, they congregate just like any tree when you find a grove of oaks or you find a patch of oaks or, uh, you know, you can find several white oaks all in one location. It seems like maybe there's a, a big mother tree and then there's a bunch of, of smaller trees, juvenile trees. Uh, same with persimmons. If you find one, look around in the same area, you're liable to find a grove, uh, which would be very efficient wildlife attractor. So, we thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is Brian with Cliffside Outfitters. Y'all have a good